Hey, what's up guys? It's Tyler here. And for this chopper check, we're with Jan Charlman. We're gonna talk about his 1946 knucklehead, but we're gonna do something a little different today and we're gonna unpack his bike and tell stories from a trip he just took across the country with it. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks for having me. It's good to be back. Absolutely. Did you, um, now, first things first, you have a flat. I have a flat. Um, we made it across the whole country and I got a flat about 15 miles away from the shop. So, you know, good way to end a trip. Haven't changed it out yet. Might just leave it like that for a little bit. Have no real desire to get back on the bike anytime soon. So it'll fix itself when it gets there. And um, so you guys, you started here, you drove out to New York and then made your way back on the bikes to California. Yeah, um, so I started the trip with my buddy Wyatt. Um, it was Wyatt and his brother Elias, so we started the trip in Los Angeles. We had to bring my bike and his moto, which was a 61 panhead, across um, to New York to start the trip from Shelter Island, New York, which is like East Long Island. Um, so we drove across, when did we leave, like four months ago? It was like four months ago? Yeah. Um, drove across and then built his bike up and then rode back. And so now my truck's still in New York, but but the bike's back, so, yeah. And uh, you think you're gonna ride back to get the truck? Yeah, so the plan right now, <laughs> you know, I need to talk to the pals that are in charge, my boss, uh, but it'll be fun to ride them back the southern route and then put them back in the truck and then drive the truck back across with, with everything, so that's the plan for now. Uh, cameo appearance. Yeah. Come on in. Yeah, yeah. So guys, this is uh, Wa this is Elias. Hello. And this is Wyatt. <laughs> yeah, what's going These on? are the the three that made it across the country and have uh, just made it to LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just started, so, All right, so we're just gonna be talking for yeah, a little bit. Camera shot for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys took the northern route. Yeah, we took the northern route, um, driving across in the truck. We went to pretty much like the 70 the whole way. We dropped off a bike in Milwaukee. Um, that was a raffle for Hog Supply. And then went, yeah, east to New York. And then coming back, we our route pretty much was started in New York, went up north through Connecticut. We hit the whole New England area um, through Maine, uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, stuff like that. And then shot across back to upstate New York where we stayed for like 4th of July time frame and then, yeah, dipped down south through Illinois, Kentucky, Iowa, um, and then shot all the way up to North Dakota and then pretty much east all the way from there. Uh, wow. Went through Yellowstone and then came onto the Oregon coast and then San Francisco and back here. Yeah, so we didn't really hit any southern states, um, but that's for the return and trip, I think, so. What was the uh, best riding you guys did? I liked, oh man, I really enjoyed uh, Idaho. Idaho was a pretty, pretty good time. Um, there was lots of good riding in Oregon, Oregon coastline. Even like the deep central Oregon's got some crazy stuff out there. Uh, North Dakota had the bad, Badlands, which was great. You know, like I, I always thought North Dakota was just flat. There's like one main highway that runs through. Love North Dakota. It's a great place. But like on the map, you like, it doesn't look like much. But once you get west of Bismarck, it's, it's really beautiful out there too. Um, the East Coast was kind of crazy. It's just a lot of trees. You don't really get to see much scenery. It's not wide open spaces. Um, it's more just like confined highways, like full lane blacktop kind of things. So, but I, I think the West Coast has like the best riding so far. Dang. Do you guys agree? Idaho was fucking sick. Yeah. So consensus, Idaho was the consensus best. like Idaho and Oregon, I think, are the best ones so far. But, huh. So you had to go all the way across the country just to find out that the uh, the West Coast is the the better place. You kind of like gotta leave something <laughs> to make you appreciate it. <laughs> um. So let's talk about your bike a little bit. You kind of have it set up for distance. Um. You know you've changed a couple of things before you left. Uh, can you highlight like a couple of the things you did with the intention of long distance riding? Yeah, so I built the bike about a year and three, four months ago. Um, I built it for the trip. Uh, I wanted something that was gonna be comfortable. So I 
I went with like a very like relaxed front end with like a mellow rake on it um, to kind of keep my bike low to the ground. Um, I wanted to keep it like a 16 inch rear so it would be like a little bit lower as well, a little bit more like rubber on the ground compared to like an 18 or a 19. Um, when it comes to like things I did right before the trip, uh, I changed the gearing out. I had a really tall uh, rear sprocket for the trans and that was like making my motor lug quite a bit and also just like made me realize I was like running my shit way too fast and like I don't need to be going 85 miles now like all day every day so dropping it to a to a smaller ratio like helped out because it kind of forced us to go like a 65 70 75 mile an hour average which kind of lets you take it in a little bit more better and you're not in a rush to get places because you know you're not going to be able to go fast anyways uh I redid the sissy bar right before the trip um, with like some uh, channel iron, just kind of make it a little bit stiffer than a standard round stock. I built an auxiliary gas tank. Uh, it's about like three and a half gallons capacity, but I didn't end up running it because I was just kind of nervous I was going to snap the sissy bar yeah. with the vibration and the weight. Uh, so that thing's still in New York right now. But maybe on the next trip, I'll try it out and just see what what happens. But we never ran out of gas the entire time anyways. so. I don't think I need one. I think the one gallon can's been fine. And yeah, what was like the gnarliest thing that happened or is there any like crazy stories from the trip? Well, anything you can talk about? I mean, it was pretty uneventful for the most part. Nothing crazy happened. Like no one pulled a gun on us and we didn't get harassed by the cops and everywhere we went, people were genuinely very nice and always willing to help us out. Um, we had a couple bike issues. My brake locked up in New York and in uh, Idaho, so had to stop and fix that. Uh, it took a couple days for parts to arrive. Um, Wyatt had his, his motor blow up in New York, actually. Forgot about that one. Yeah, he, how many miles, like 1,200 miles into the trip uh, from upstate New York. We were like going over this terrible bumpy road and we like pulled it off into like this parking lot of a grocery store called Price Chopper, kind of sick. Okay. Uh, and then we found out that his left side case was cracked about like seven or eight inches all the way around. So um, that, was, that was probably the most eventful thing of the entire trip. Uh, we found out that a buddy had an extra panhead motor and he was in North Dakota, so we linked up with him um, and got a new one put in. We put it in, in Kentucky and kept going. But that was probably the, the one like, moment where everyone just realized like this kind of sucks like yeah. a lot um but looking back now i had a good time i think they had a good time uh but yeah i painted my frame uh we're in upstate new york for about two weeks three weeks and um the bike was originally black before i left on the trip and then i got a little bit bored so i just I like rattle canned it in the garage. With the motor in? Yeah, the bike was just like this. I just like masked it off with some tin foil and then sprayed it. Um, just to kind of give it a something, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say you left with a black bike and came back with a red one. Yeah, I really wanted to do it again just to like do it again. But, uh, you know, stars didn't align, so. Yeah. All right, well, should we go through your pack and kind of see? I think people would be pretty interested in what you take on a trip like this. And luckily, you've only been here a couple days and haven't unpacked yet. Yeah, I uh, haven't touched it since coming back. Um, what was the single most important thing you brought? Ooh, most important versus most valuable. I feel like most important was um, having like a charging pack for my phone. Because a lot of the times we would sleep in places that didn't have like electricity. Most places we was slept in. Was it like a solar it. one? It was just like a. Bring it right here. It's just a basic, um, like you charge it up out of an outlet and then it's good for about five or six charges. But it was good because then we wouldn't have like a GPS issue the next day when our phones were dead or like we could still figure out where we're going. Um, but something like this was like a lifesaver. Yeah. Um, everybody had their own. It's nice just because you, you, know, you don't have to worry about it. And I charge it probably once every four or five days at like a diner or a coffee shop and stuff like that. Um, 
But next time, I think the, the move would be to put a USB charger on the bike that's just directly connected to the battery and, yeah. the, uh, and the, the generator, just so it could always have like a power source if you needed it. But you want to go through it? Yeah, what's in the tube? Um, so the tube is from a recommendation from a friend. He's like, you guys should really get into fishing. So we got a fly fishing setup. Uh, with like a collapsible rod and reel. Okay. Um, on this side, I keep like the spool. Did you catch any fish? We caught some crawfish one time. <laughs> <laughs> you got like the, the tiny reel for it. Um, okay. And then, I see you falling out of your bag so far is a spark plug. Deodorant, Advil, a speaker, and a flask. Oh, the, the best item is the speaker for sure. Um, it's nice to like go somewhere and like be able to listen to music when you're like hanging out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, it gets kind of like quiet, like a little too quiet sometimes. So it was good. Like we didn't use it, like every night, but when we did, it was kind of nice. Um, just to like have some background noise when we're like cooking or. Do you have any songs up. that were like a, an anthem of the trip? Oh, yeah, I can say Creed, but like. I don't want to say Creed, but yeah, Creed was pretty sick. A lot of Creed on the trip. A lot of like, damn, what were we listening to the trip? I listened to a lot of Young Dolph. <laughs> I don't know. What were you guys listening to? <laughs> yeah, Wyatt didn't listen to music the entire trip. Uh, Elias was just, I think, on the Young Dolph trip with me as well. But no, music-wise, it was like it's funny because you kind of associate songs to places when you like go through and like do something and you like listen to something at the same time. Um, so now when I think of like Creed, I'm associated to like North Dakota and drinking like pickle beers because that was what was playing when we were doing that. Um, but pack stuff. Um, I have a tent. I started with an Abel Brown tent and realized it wasn't the best decision. So. Went to a standalone tent with one person. I think it was like 150 bucks, like a North Face one. And then inside like a compression sack. And for the first part of the trip, it was raining quite a bit. So we used tents, but towards the end, we were just not using tents. Um, got some Polaroid. I took a bunch of Polaroids on the trip. Uh, went through like maybe 200 photos or so. So hopefully do something with those. A set of gloves from Dollar General. What else we got? Some of thermal bottoms that go underneath like my jeans. This is like a really good one to have. Uh, cold mornings, it's like it kind of sucks to just be like going like 60 miles an hour in the freeway, but these like break the wind really well and like keep a layer between your skin and the jeans. So I have this as my warming layer, and then I have a field jacket, which will go on like a hoodie. Um, and those are my only two warming layers. And I wore like another hoodie, and I wore just like a regular cotton hoodie. Um, a t-shirt that a friend gave me from Sturgis when they went. What else we got? A sleeping bag inside a like Is old a surplus. Sack? Yeah, like an old surplus bivy sack. Um, it's nice because it like isn't bright like blue, so like when you're camping in places that might be a little bit like more questionable, it's a little bit lower profile. Um, and it stops your sleeping bag from just getting gross as well from stuff on the ground. Uh, I have a pair of underwear. And an extra hat. And that's pretty much it for the clothes and camping stuff. Yeah. Uh, like a mini microfiber towel is kind of nice to have as well because if you like go swimming in a lake or a river, it's, it's good to be able to dry off and not be miserable for a while. Um, got a little snack pack from a little chocolate pudding. On this side, I got a sleeping mat, which is like an inflatable Nemo Tensa thing. Uh, these are, I like these, but uh, like Wyatt had some issues on the trip with his deflating and popping and really hard to patch up. Same thing with Elias. It's like an ultralight thing, so it's like really light and small, but it um, it doesn't really like have much resistance to things like sticks and twigs and rocks. So like very easy to pop, but it yeah. is nice. And it inflates to like two and a half inches thick. I had the same one yeah. and I had it for years and it worked great. And then I patched it and it worked great. And then eventually it gave out 
and then I spent a bunch of money on it, and then I got one from Costco for like twenty bucks that I'm like three years into. That's that the best stays thing. Inflated. Is it that green one you have? Is yeah. it green? Yeah, that thing looks good. Um, some clips. Uh, on this side, I have like my Polaroid camera, so I like how leave it on the side here so it's easy to get out and take photos at stops and stuff. Let's see what, yeah? Huh? A little portrait time. <laughs> um, and then in this pouch, I got like a beanie and a pack cover, which is like for a, like hiking packs and stuff. So when it starts raining, you can just like put this on your whole pack to stop it from uh, getting wet. And it just like comes across and then there's like an elastic band on the back to keep everything nice and tight. So that was good to have. And then that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, I didn't really bring much. I didn't really want to bring too much because I just didn't want to have to deal with it and keep and my- And just standard tools. Yeah, I have just a set of every size wrench and just a couple like specific things, but nothing really crazy. Um, I brought like an extra magneto that I kept in the oil bag, just in case uh, my one went out. But other than that, nothing really, nothing really crazy. We all carried extra belts and chains, um, but did you need any of them? I didn't need a belt or a chain this whole time. I just changed it out halfway through because it was getting a little worn out. But uh, Wyatt's I think snapped a couple times, twice on the trip. So he had, he started the trip with three belts extra and now he's got one, so. But yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy. Oh, and then if you're like gonna sleep on the floor and not like not do like the pad or anything like that, it's nice to have like a little footprint for like a tent to like sleep on top so you just don't get covered in mud or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's good to cover the bikes when it rains or. Stuff like that. Yeah, it seems like you did a very uh, very low profile bag, you know. I yeah. Mean, I know people that take more than this for a weekend. Yeah. Well, I just, I kind of didn't want to just lug around a bunch of stuff. Um, because the more stuff I had, the more things I could lose and just rely on. So I, we only, I think all of us just only brought one or two pairs of clothes. Just the shirt that we were wearing and then like an extra t-shirt in the backpack. Yeah. Um, I think um, as like a you know, avid motorcycle rider and Harley enthusiast. I think like riding across the country is kind of like the pinnacle experience you can have. Um, yeah. Would you say it matched up to what you thought it would? The, I feel like it's so easy to romanticize, like the whole thing of like riding, you know, through all these crazy places. And it's easy to like think that it's gonna be the best thing ever and like build your expectations to be this like, this holy grail of events in your life. and. Personally, for me, it kind of like met everything. Like, and there was nothing on the trip that I was like, man, I'm kind of not glad I'm doing this. Every day was good. There was like obviously bad days and the days where you like don't want to get on the bike. But then like a day later, you'd go like ride through some crazy air and just be stoked again. So it's nice to have like the, the back and forth. You gotta have like terrible days to like have really good days. Um, but luckily for us, it was, it was more good days than, than really bad ones ever, so. But yeah, I think, if you have the chance to do it, you should definitely do it. Um, everyone should do it like just at least once. Even if you like don't want to go all the way across country, just like checking out the entire West Coast or the East Coast or Midwest, Central Country, whatever. Like it's there's so many things out there that once you start going, it's kind of hard to stop. And I think if they don't have the drive to do the whole country, you will like afterwards. So, what's your relationship like with motorcycles after the trip? Um, I mean, I still enjoy them. They pretty much are like all I think about and do at this point. Uh, I'm lucky to have a, an amazing job that like allows me to be around them on a daily basis. And like if I didn't have that job before the trip and like learn the things I learned, I don't think I would like I would have made it on, yeah. to the other side because there's just so many things that if you don't know, it, it's kind of hard to figure out on the fly. But luckily, I got a good boss to kind of guide me through everything. And like every time I had problems, I just call him, be like, hey. Like, I have no idea what's going on. And he'd be like, oh, you just do this and this, and it would like, be perfect, so. Yeah. Um, I still love bikes. I'm still gonna keep loving bikes, I think. Uh, now it's just like trying to figure out, yeah, now it's just trying to figure out uh, 
like what the next ride will be and like what the next bike will be because yeah. there's definitely things I thought would be perfect for the trip about this bike and it ended up being such a pain in the ass. So I would what like to. What were some of those things? The front end. Um, there's too many proprietary things going on with it. So like when I had issues with like my my handlebars, uh, like the the studs going into the spring are like one of them has a crack and it's like kind of wobbling now and it's like it, I can't just like stop and put a new bolt in like I could if it was like a regular hydraulic front end. Um, because these are like inline springers, there's not a really good turning radius, which is fine in a lot of places, but sometimes it's nice to be able to pull out of a parking spot and do like a 90 degree like turn without having to like go into the opposite lane and stuff like that. Um, I'd probably go through my motor now. Uh, there's no compression in the rear cylinder anymore and it like leaks everywhere. So I just want to like freshen it up and change the things before going back out again. Yeah. Um, but other than that, not, not really too much. Yeah. I always, whenever I'm on a trip on the bike, I always have like, I feel like the whole time I'm on the trip, all I'm thinking about is like what bike I want that would meet this trip's needs like perfectly. Oh yeah. You know? And then the thing is like, you get to that point and then it's actually something completely different. Ab every like, time. like when we did DVR last year, like your d bike was so sick. And then like, I remember we getting the first gas station, you're like, man, these rises suck. <laughs> Cause they were just like shaking so much. And then you change it out and it was like, great. But there's always something. Yeah. There's always something that you can like improve on. But I don't think that uh, there's gonna be a perfect bike for everything. You yeah. kind of have to make, make sacrifices in one way or another. Unless you like got it figured out, which, you know, good for you, but. Yeah, I don't I'm think gonna, anybody yeah. really does, right? I think if they say they do, they're kind of lying. There's no way. Uh, all right, guys, now we're gonna do a detailed walkthrough of Jan's knucklehead. So you wanna start from the front? Uh, sure, so starting from the front, it's a 21 inch spool wheel with a Avon, it's like the pretty generic setup, but it's, the tires last a long time. Um, I've never had problems with them. It's like a 16 inch extended Harley Springer. It's a reproduction made by W&W &W in Europe. Um, it's a decent Springer. There's a couple things that are kind of strange about it. There's like a three degree rake in the neck of the Springer itself. So it, when you're building a bike, you kind of have to like base it around the fact that the spring is not going to sit how you want it to sit out of the box. Uh, handlebars, just, I made some of these like a couple months before the trip. Um, I ran different bars in the past and I just felt like I've always wanted to just be wide. So now I have like a very relaxed setup. The frame is a, just a straight leg uh, V-twin frame. I didn't want to try finding a real one. I, I wish I had the money to buy a real one, but for like 7,500 bucks, I don't think I can justify that this time. Um, it cracked in a couple places around the trip. Uh, we found a crack in North Dakota, and my friend Lee, Vitsy Boys, shout out to Vitsy Boys for having us for that week. Good time. He fixed it for me on the spot, and uh, it, now it's been good. Uh, the motor is a 46 that I think it's got about 20,000 on it now um, since it was built and it's pretty tied so I'm gonna have to go through the top end and just like redo some stuff. Um, I have a Magneto from uh, just a Fairbanks Fair and Fair Banks and Moss, whatever. It's like the, the clone one, like the V-twin knockoff, I yeah. think, you know. Uh, I haven't had an issue with it on the trip. I had it at the start of the trip, some issues, but I just, Turned out to be me uh, dropping the ball on some things. When it comes not to behind the bars. What's that? Is yeah. Not behind the bars. Not what's behind the bars. Uh, mechanical brake. Um, I had some issues with the brakes, with the brakes going out a couple times um, from like just bad manufacturing on the pads and things like that. Um, just standard trans up sweeps to a Star Hub 16 inch rear wheel. Uh, with an Avon on it, no, just like the most basic, there's nothing really special on the bike. Like, and I wanted to make sure that if something broke on it, I could just replace it. So I didn't like do any crazy oil lines. And I didn't want to like do any crazy like mounts for the motor or like change the frame too much. I just wanted to be like, if something broke, I could just go on and like, like order a replacement part and like put it back on and keep going. So um, I had to replace the kick cover at Lee's again because uh, it started leaking really bad. The bushing was shot. So now it's bad again. So need to change that. Uh, 
It's got a B and C seat on it, which was being great the whole time. It kind of looks uncomfortable, but it's actually fine. I don't, I don't never had any issues with it, so might just keep that on for the next bike. Uh, and then a sissy bar that I made, and that's about it. There's nothing too crazy on the other side. It's just an open belt um, with just like a knockoff leaf foot clutch and a ratchet top shifter. And yeah, no crazy fab work and there's no crazy like gizmos. I just wanted to keep it kind of simple. But I think on the next bike, I might get a little dumb with it just because, like, why not? But, yeah. but right now, it's just uh, pretty basic. Cool. Well, thank you.